Chapter 10, Estimating and Hypothesis Testing. In this video, we'll learn how to conduct hypothesis tests for the difference between two population means for paired samples. Now, paired samples are dependent samples. This is when we have samples that are selected in a way that the values in one sample are matched with the values in the second sample. And this is done to control for extraneous factors. In other words, for instance, we could take a pre and post test of the students in our class. So the same students at the beginning of the semester taking a statistics test and the same students taking the same test at the end of the semester. And we can now see if there's a difference between your before and after. So other examples might be the SAT scores for a group of students before they take an SAT prep class and after an SAT prep class. That way we can see if the prep class was helpful to the students. Or a business example, perhaps we want to look at the employees' sales numbers before they take a sales training course and after taking a sales training course to see if the course has helped them improve their sales numbers. The important thing here is that the same people are taking the same test. So just like with our hypothesis testing that we've looked at before, we're working with two-tailed tests, one-tailed lower tail tests, and one-tailed upper tail tests. And the way the hypotheses are written here is that our population mean difference, so that's where you see here's mu, our population mean, little d for difference, is equal to zero or not equal to zero. For our one-tailed lower tail test, it says that our population mean difference is less than zero or in the lower end of our curve, so it points to the left. And for our one-tailed upper tail test, it says that our population mean difference is greater than zero. Again, it's pointing to the right, so it's an upper tail test. So when you see the little d, you know you're working with paired samples because we're only working with one population. That's why you only see one mu. But what we're trying to test for, is there a difference within that population looking at paired samples? So the same sample twice for their before and after results. So let's look at problem 43 in the textbook. An advancement that helped to diminish carpal tunnel syndrome is ergonomic keyboards, which may also increase typing speed. 10 administrative assistants were chosen to type on both standard and ergonomic keyboards. The resulting word per minute typing speeds are given in the table here. So note here that this table of data is from our textbook. But when you do your homework, you're going to be given different set of numbers. So our first question asks, were the two samples obtained independently from each other? So are these two completely separate groups that we are examining? No, they weren't. Since our same 10 administrative assistants were used to test both types of keyboards, the sampling was done dependently. That means we have a sample of matched pairs. So our problem then asks us to conduct a hypothesis test to determine if the ergonomic keyboards increase the average words per minute attained while typing. We're going to use both the critical value approach and the p-value approach with a significance level of 0.01 so that we can learn how to read the Excel table for both uh, approaches. Assume equal population variances. So for our null and our alternative hypotheses, we will set it up like this. Because recall, we're interested to see if our ergonomic keyboards increase the average words per minute. So the context clue here is the increase. So we're going to, for our alternative hypothesis, state greater than zero because the difference between our two samples potentially will be greater than for the ergonomic keyboards. So again, because we have a greater than symbol here in our alternative hypothesis, this tells us we are working with an upper tail test. So it's helpful to sometimes draw our upper tail test and our alpha is given to us or our significance level is 0.01. Next we want to make sure we identify our degrees of freedom. Since we're just working with one population, in this case this is the population of administrative assistants typing on keyboards, we're going to use n minus 1, which is 10 minus 1 equals 9. 
Now, do we know the population standard deviation? Nowhere in the story was it mentioned. Uh, we also didn't see sigma given to us anywhere. So, no, we do not know the population standard deviations, and therefore we'll be working with t values. So, in this problem, we're going to use Excel. And so here are the steps to how to conduct a, a paired samples t-test. And you'll use Excel to do this. So here I've got problem 43 set up here in Excel. And again, when you do your homework in my stat lab, you'll have slightly different numbers. So you want to make sure to use the Excel file for your homework that'll be different than this Excel file for practice. So here again are the instructions to conduct our t-test. And you can also find these on your worksheet. So I'm going to go to data and click on my data analysis. And again, I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to look for the t-test of paired two sample for means and click OK. Now, when you open up, when the menu appears, there might be some information already in it if your Excel remembers what you did last. So make sure to clear it out so you don't accidentally select the wrong information and we'll start fresh. So our next step is to select the data ranges. So for variable one, that'll be my ergonomic keyboards. And I like to always select the label so that when I get my table, it's labeled correctly. I won't accidentally mix up my information. My second variable, which is the standard keyboard. And our hypothesized mean difference, we're hypothesizing that it's zero difference. I'll check my labels button because I did highlight ergonomic and standard. My alpha in the problem was uh, 0 0.01. Now if you hit OK, uh, the table will appear on a new tab, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on the same page so that we can see our information. I'll put it right here. And then I'm going to hit OK. And here is the results of our data. In this case, we are working with an upper tail test. That means it's only one tail. So I'm going to be looking at our T test statistic here. And I'm also going to look at our data here for one tail. Here's my P value and here's my critical T value. So you're going to use these numbers to make your decision. So let's go back to our write up. So our decision rule states that we will reject the null if the calculated value of the test statistic T is greater than, because we're in an upper tail test, and the critical value that was stated was 2.82. Otherwise, we do not reject the null. Then in part B, the calculated value of our test statistic, according to our Excel output, was 3.17 rounded. Now for part C, we want to make our decision using the critical value method and the p-value method. This way we have practice of using both approaches. So for the critical value method, we are just going to compare part B to part A. Because our test statistic of 3.17 is greater than our critical value of 2.82, we reject the null. For our p-value method, going to our Excel output, the p-value that we were given showed us that, that because our p-value of 0.005 is less than our alpha value of 0.01, we reject the null. Note that whether you use the critical value method or the p-value method, you get the same decision at the end, which is reject the null. In other words, if we had to explain this to a decision maker, there is sufficient evidence that the ergonomic keyboards increase the average words per minute attained while typing, because there is a difference. Our alternative hypothesis is our conclusion that we're going to highlight.